Well, today we're going to take you on a behind-the-scenes tour and show you some places that you might not know about. Come on. Are there any hidden or interesting places in this TV station that you know about? There's lots of hidden places, but I don't know about interesting. The basement's <laughs> kind of spooky. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Let's do it. I'm going to I'm going to start out by I think like opening the freezer oh. and just being like um, some people here oh, yeah in, in a career where there's not much downtime a lot of people are finding healthy alternatives okay okay let's see what healthy options we have in our freezer kind of deal all right here is our TV5 freezer let's see what healthy options we have in there options like green bean casserole and honey glazed carrots. <laughs> All right. So down this windy hallway in the basement of a TV station is a secret place that many don't know about. In Saginaw, Liz Gilardi, WNEM, TV5. I have an interview. That's I We have our out for yep. here. Uh -huh. Mike oh, I, I didn't know. I kind of liked the way it was. What? He's hard to introduce. Suit. You know, because it was you giving the tour. Uh, so yeah, that's why you're seeing some of the remnants. I mean, I, of the old it's nice to have him, but I don't know where you fit him in your story. I don't know either. I got him after, but... He goes into another news camp. Yeah. He's, okay. Yeah, he's, he, he's the breakout. And coming up at 6, we'll tell you. <laughs> Lights flicker on and off. Um, those have been some of the occurrences that I've seen like and heard. Do you believe in ghosts? Um, yes, I do. All right, thank you. Okay, go ahead. So is it the ghost of a longtime loyal employee? You will be the judge. <laughs> so is it the ghost of a longtime loyal employee? You will be the judge. And as we walk around the station, we come across Sarah Kirkland. Oh, wow. Sarah Kirkland, do you need help? I'm going to try what I can. But I mean, you're a producer. You work super early hours sometimes. Is it really, All the time. Is it possible to eat healthy in your Irish shut down. It, it, it gets to be a challenge, um, especially when you up all kind of hours and on different schedules. Um, you kind of eat when you can, what you can, whatever's around you sometimes. So, can be challenging. It's clear. These trash cans tell the story. <laughs> nice. Natural sound. Good thing I have tonight here. So, it's clear. Once you look at the... Oh, crap. Thank you. <laughs> it's clear, once you look at the vending machines here at TV5, employees don't have many options. <laughs> it's Agnaw, T-A-U-N-W-N-M, TV5. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the first time we've seen that. There was some sound in there because you were close. You know, that's what I liked about it. You had some things. You had movement. You created. You know, I mean, you could have just shot trash. And, uh, and so I like that. And I also try to choose the healthy alternatives. I am not as good as my good friend Mike, but I do have a Diet Coke and an orange for my uh, afternoon lunch. So uh, reporting in the newsroom, Catherine Bodak, WNEM TV 5. I thought it was very steady. I guess I'm going to be honest, coming into this, I was like, man, MMJ, that's really not my thing. Mm -hmm. But um, after looking at my story, yeah. I think that I have yeah. some creativity that maybe I didn't realize I had. Well, because I when you're money. with someone else, you don't really want to be all on their back like, well, get this, get this, get that. You know, and after a while, you're like, they're like, you know what, I don't want to work with Tia anymore. I'm tired of her, like, bossing me around. So um, I think by you being alone with the camera, it gives you the opportunity to have more creative control and it's I think that's what I learned that it's okay to be creative and like you're saying you know your personality comes out and all of that yeah. obviously like you said it would yeah. be a murder situation you wouldn't do that but I think yeah. the beauty of my situation is um, a lot of times when I go to like stories these are people that I see on a regular basis because I'm in the Flint community a lot so like when I'm interviewing somebody, people at home are probably like, wow, she got a good interview out of that person. Well, yeah, I see that person all the time. Yeah, Most of my subjects, yeah. I see all the time. Yeah, yeah. So like um, 
I think it's just an opportunity for me to be more creative and have more ownership yeah. over my story. Let me take what you said and take the extra step. Um, I have an anchor that actually says what you said on the air. I've known you for, for three years as, as, as mayor. You've never been so concerned about the city budget and taxes as I've seen you today. So we would urge you through transparency, I am calls it transparency, whatever you call it, to, to let that out. Because right. if you put that on the air, it's not grandstanding. What, what, if, what do people think about an, an, a reporter that says that? Well, she's known him for several years, and she's able to draw out more information. Right. Pictures are, are our, our trade. You know, that's what we do. Video drives everything. And, and so whatever you can do to, to make it interesting to watch, because everybody's got a clicker, everybody's got that, you know, and if it's the same shot, if it's the same thing, if it doesn't have sound to it, if, it, if, it, if, if they see it not different from anything else, then they're going to go right on past, they're going to say, I've, I've seen that story a million times. You know, it's the interesting details, it's the nice piece of natural sound, it's the, it's the great interview that you have from close up that makes, you know, makes those stories. And, and that's what I hope you, you go out and get. We're starting to get pretty foggy and then it fills with fog. Uh, I, that's now is that the lens fogging yeah, up? Yeah, that's the lens, that's lens fogging up. up. That's good. Yeah. It unfogged pretty fast. Wow, that's good. It really does. That's almost like a, a, a dissolve. Yeah. yeah. And I said uh, when it rains secrets, it pours. Who knew that Al used to be a radio announcer and used to rock out with his motorcycle? Oh, nice. Okay. And that was the closing shot. Good Very shoes, good. Boy. It's like camp with his motorcycle. Yeah. So most some of some of the shots weren't narrated, others were. The only thing that was not narrated was the sequence of the, the shower sh run. Shower that's going to use that for Nats. Remembering those details, having to remember those details as a photographer, something that a reporter 101 would just know. Mm -hmm. I've got to think of. Same thing with her. On the flip side of her being a, a reporter, what I would know, assume is automatic. She has to now think of, and mm -hmm. it's just getting in that mindset. Yeah. It's a big thing. And o over time, especially with your gear, that's your gear, you'll come to trust it. And so, you you, you know, you won't have to have an earpiece in all the time, or you won't, you'll feel pretty comfortable just checking it, or, okay, I know how my microphone is acting, it, if it's not, if it doesn't look good, or, if, or if, if, some, if I went on vacation and someone may have used my camera, that's when, that's when bad stuff happens, mm -hmm. because... Somebody picked it up and they go, I don't like the setting. This is, yeah, I hate this. And then you come back and think that it's just like your old friend, mm -hmm. and it's it's different. So that's I run into problems when that happens. And but most of the time on a day-to-day -day basis, your camera is the way you like it, and you get used to it, and you go out and it works like it's supposed to. But it's that first day, it's the other thing. It's when the battery goes and you're not and you forgot to check it, or you know, I I mean I routinely replace nine volt batteries. I just have a four or five spares all the time because you know they they go and and I, I might have my earpiece and I might not but if I know the battery's fresh I, you know and then I check to see if the meter's going tap the mic it yeah it's ten. working like what am I going to get known for as an MMJ is it going to be for cool stand-ups you know I after I shot the stand-up in the pontoon boat I was like just fantasizing about what other cool stand-ups I could end up doing maybe I'll be known for that maybe if my writing isn't as strong, I know my shooting is going to be good, but what can I do that will make my story memorable? Maybe it will be my stand-up, and that's something I can control. Making sure that I feel like the viewer is there with me in the story, you know, invoking that personal feel, that human element, and make, you know, and getting in the story. Not standing back on the street, getting wide, medium, tight, but getting in the story. And as an MMJ, it's easier to do that because you're not following behind a photog, it's just you. Yeah, I think that that type of storytelling, while you may not use it all the time, MMJs do better that better than anybody else. That's the one thing you can do better than any other photojournalist crew out there is is be the eyes and ears of the person that's you know that's that's watching that screen. That's their eyes too. So you're right there, and if you're talking and pointing or or guiding them through something, that you do that better than anybody. In the and it really helps in situations of breaking news of narrating while you're while you're shooting because you get so wrapped up in shooting and getting wide medium tight that you could be using that as an opportunity to narrate which may help you on the back end you know if you need to feed something there real quickly so that's a very valuable uh, 
um, tool that I'll try to keep in mind. It's fresh, mm -hmm. and it's 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 different. You're kind of it's it's create it's automatic creativity. Seems to me like I mean you're 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 doing something you haven't done, and just by the way, it's something that nobody else is doing either, mm -hmm. and. I think one of the main criticisms of television news is that every time I turn on the TV, it all looks the same. Yeah. Every story, I've seen this story a hundred times before. I see crime tape, I see flashing lights, and if you can figure out a way to tell a story differently, just through how you do your job, you know, suddenly you 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 have kind of an automatic style, I think, or you have kind of you know you do it different than anybody else just because you have to. And I, you know, whatever's fresh, I think people stop and they look at that. They they they'll take notice. Where are other TV stations at in this process? Uh, some are just saying, hey, here's a camera. Congratulations, you're you know you're 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 now a news gatherer. And sorry that we you don't have a photographer to go with you. You know, you're you're pretty fortunate here that you have some training. You have a chance to sit down and, and talk over some concepts with us, and you have brand new equipment that you know isn't cheap, and so a lot of the problems that it, that exist in small market stations, smaller market stations don't exist for you because you have you have great stuff, yet it takes good pictures. You have brand new computers, so you can't blame the equipment, especially if it's yours, and you take good care of it, then. That problem is erased, and that's a big that's a big problem. If you can trust what you use, then news gathering becomes a lot, a lot easier. It's a refrigerator. What are you hiding from us, at TV Five? Upon opening the door, upon opening the door, the refrigerator has no comment. But look closer. What in the world is that thing? Look, do you see it? Look at that sandwich. Does that look appealing to you? I'm not eating it. <laughs> oh, no, no, I got you. You know, you're trying to keep something clean right now. Obviously, would you put anything in that refrigerator? And why? Jeremy. All right. Uh, does it, have you seen the refrigerator in there? Yes. Doesn't it look appealing? No. I mean, don't do that. All right. Hey, a manner of business manager, everybody. See how your question? Yes. If you'd no, only no, no. save her sound bite, you have yes, no, yes, no. But but your questions mean make all the difference in that interview. And. I agree with Pam, I wouldn't put anything in this refrigerator either. Just ask this cottage cheese, which speaks of unspeakable tragedy. Lord knows how long that thing's been in there. Why don't we open and see? Oh, what is that? Man, I'm not eating that. Do you want it? So, oh, well, Pam, you can show me that. You can... Just when I thought Pam was done talking to me, look what she discovered in the freezer. Look at this. Fender. Wow. Gary J. And that's 12-8 of 09. Not so lean cuisine if you ask me. See? That's wow. nice. That's a good little one. you say freezer burn? <laughs> These look great. All Pam can do is laugh and walk away. Stay far away from the refrigerator. Reporting from Saginaw, James Felton, WNEM, TV5. They just got a couple extra shots yeah, yeah. to cover over, you know, just to, just in case you need them. Now, this story had a lot of flair and imagination. Do you, you see the gap between the regular day-to-day -day and what you did here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, uh, yeah. We don't yeah. have this in the day-to-day -day yet, but I think once we implement the yeah. MMJ style here, yeah. where we are allowed to be more creative, I yeah. think that's going to happen.